be a good day to be in Florida. Yes. Actually, it's raining today. It just now, it literally just now quit and is clearing off and it's time for church. <laughs> well, it's, it's bright and sunny in Virginia. Well, it. I mean, it, it's sunny now. It's sunny now, but it, it wasn't five minutes ago. You know how Florida is. It rains and then it doesn't. Well, it's foggy and post-snow. Oh. That's what happens in Colorado, I guess. Hi, Carolyn. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Go Chiefs. Go Chiefs. Since we're not going to be there next week, I don't think. So. Oh, good thought. Uh, yeah, and Tom, I hope, hope you're doing something really fun. <laughs> I will be. Good, good. Okay, I'm going to mute my opening. Me too. Oh, I'll okay. miss you. Uh. Good morning. And welcome to worship this morning here at First Presbyterian Church. I hope that you feel the welcoming spirit of Jesus Christ as we gather together today in his name. I'm going to let you know about some announcements. Uh, committees are meeting this week. Uh, we have Christian Ed and Worship after the service today. Trustees on Tuesday via Zoom and then Mission Committee on Wednesday. This is also the week for nursing home ministry, so you're welcome to join me in that. We're going to be at the Arbors on Thursday at 10 and at Harmony Gardens on Saturday at 10. Um, some of my regulars aren't going to be able to make it, so if you could make it, that would be helpful for me because I can't you know, play piano and sing and lead and do the Heather show every day. So please help me out if you can, um, especially at Harmony Gardens because we try to serve communion, so any help I can get would be great. Believe it or not, the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl again. Huh? Huh? Chiefs? Suddenly we showed up after the season we had. I didn't think we were going to be there, but there we are. So everybody's invited to wear Chief stuff next week to church. If you have it, put it on and wear it, and we'll celebrate together. And then uh, it's time for a new members class. We've got a lot of folks kind of hanging around. I'd love to get to know a little bit better and tell you more about the church. And so if you are interested in new members class, talk to me, and I will try to talk to you. And we'll try to find a time to get together and, and then talk about what, what does it mean to join this church. And then uh, looking ahead, uh, Ash Wednesday is coming up, not this Wednesday, but next, Valentine's Day. Um, so we're going to have a, 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 a service at 530 that night to mark the start of Lent. And so uh, people are invited to come to that event, that evening service, to receive the imposition of ashes and to mark the start of Lent. Are there any other announcements this morning? Marjorie. I'm going to be there a lot to speak on Thursday. I'm looking for some very simple recipes that use pieces of chicken turkey, pieces of chicken, and end of ham. <laughs> so, like these pieces of the end of ham that we did on the cheese. Anybody has any bit of cheap recipes. All right, cheap recipes for, for meat. If you can think of something, let Marjorie know. Other announcements this morning. Jennifer. Hi. Um, I am on the mission committee thing. And uh, I we are doing two things that I want to give you a heads up on. Next week we are collecting for Super Bowl Sunday. And I will send out a beautiful flyer that a friend of mine made for us through email. So as a reminder, and then, you know, who you know, And then we are also going to have a fundraising dinner where we will serve you chili. It's coming at the end of February, maybe early March. And the money will go to the Colton Center Outreach Street. Colton Street Outreach Center. And that's all I have to say. Okay. All right. So Mission is working on some projects. Any other announcements this morning? All right. The choir then is going to lead us into our time of worship. Thank you. 
Good morning. Please stand for the call to worship. Who is like our God who names the stars? Great is our God. Give God the praise. Who is like our God who knows our names? Gracious is our God. Give God our love. Let us worship God. So I'm sitting there going, Please be seated. We fool ourselves if we think that our ways are hidden from God. Therefore, let us confess our sin, trusting in the mercy of God, our maker. Please join with me in the prayer of confession printed in your bulletin. God, you are everlasting, the creator of all that is. Your understanding is beyond measure. We confess to you that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. In your compassion, forgive us, for we place our hope in your steadfast love. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our God heals the brokenhearted and binds up our wounds. God takes pleasure in those who place their trust in God's grace. In Jesus Christ, my friends, we are forgiven. Know this to be true in your hearts today and be at peace. Amen. My friends, as we have been forgiven in Jesus Christ, we are called then to forgive each other. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. 
Please turn and share a sign of peace with your neighbors. Give me some peace. Peace, everybody. Peace, peace, peace. <laughs> Hi, Martha. Hi, Bill. Denny, oh. smile. Judy. Denny, smile. <laughs> there. there. <laughs> It wasn't that bad. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. <laughs> oh, we're going to be smiling next Sunday evening. We hope so. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> Hi, Heather. Jeez. Hey, Heather. Can you hear me? This is the dad. Okay. There's Tom. On the screen, up in the upper left hand corner, where it says music, turn that on. Okay, did you hear what I said? When you go back to the screen, then up in the upper left hand corner, you want to turn music on. Don't hear you. I think I'd rather have it look like Nancy. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, just, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying it, I have to say. Went for a nice bike days. ride yesterday, and it was wonderful. <laughs> oh, great, great. Well, I think Las Vegas is either going to be wet or... We're going to have a kid's sermon today, and I got a cheat sheet. I couldn't remember this all by myself in my little head. Grown-ups are sitting down and kids are coming up. I like your shirt, bro. That's... Oh, it's actually a jacket. It's really nice. You can be a kid today. We're all kids today. Come on up. Josephine, how are you? I like your shirt, too. All right. So today we're reading a story about Jesus, and he heals people with his hands. He touches them, and they can be healed. What are some things you can do with your hands? You can definitely touch. What else, Josephine? What do you do with your hands? Wash them. Yeah. What else do we do with our hands? We punch stuff. What else do you do with your hands? Hold cars. Play. Play. Yeah. Yeah, Josephine. Play Among Us with your hands. Yeah, play a game on a phone. Computer. Eat. Play games. Touch. Hug. Right? Hugs are kind of arms, but it's hands too. Hands do lots of things, and they can do good things and they can do bad things. Do you ever grab with your hands and take? We talked about punching. Do you ever grab if you see something you want? Yeah. Grab with your hands, right? Hands can do lots of things. So we're going to do a prayer today with our hands to remind us about good and bad things our hands could do and everybody can help us too. So let's do this together. You help me think of some hand motions for this. 
God, you created our hands, beautiful and capable, but too often we use them to grab what we want. How would you do it? Grab what we want. Too often we ball them up into fists to hit. Do that. Ooh, yeah. Too often we use them to hug only ourselves. My mic's stuck there. Too often we hide them behind our backs, pretending there's nothing we can do to help. I, nothing I can do. So, we turn our hands to you and ask for forgiveness. Forgive all the wrong things we've done with our hands. Wash our hands and make them clean. Lead us to use our hands well. Can we open our hands and share with others? Can we shake hands with our neighbors? Can we shake hands? You're leaving me hanging, bro. There. Shake hands. Can we join hands with our neighbors to build a kingdom of love? Yay. We can use our hands for good things. Yeah. We pray in Jesus' name. You are making a bridge with your hands. That's right. It's a bridge of love with your hands. It's a bridge of lines. Yes. Jesus, bless our hands. May we use them as good tools. Amen. Thanks for helping me pray with hands. Good job, everybody, today. Good job. Thanks for coming up. Some days you just feel like that, don't you? You just want to lay there. I hear you. Okay, so today's scripture reading is Psalm 147, 1 through 11, and if you're using the Red Pew Bible, it is on page 507. Listen to the word of the Lord, please. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his steadfast love. This is the word of the Lord. I'll be right there. My Zoomers are all gone, and they haven't been able to hear, and I wonder if I have the wrong. No, I got the right one going. Okay. I just was checking that I had the right microphone, because I was thinking, well, maybe I don't have it right. In case you were wondering, I'm preaching a sermon today on how not to do too much. Um, and, you know, I'm being the piano player and the pastor and the sermon and the Zoom yeah but i'm trying to stay relaxed in the midst of of all these many many tasks all right let's do this thank you for waiting for me choir i apologize
Let us pray. Gracious Lord, as we gather around your word in scripture today, we ask that you would open our minds and hearts. That as we read the story of Jesus, we might find our own stories. That we might find a message from you about our own lives this day. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. It's Mark chapter 1 again today. We're reading verses 29 through 39. Listen for the word of the Lord to you this day. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told her him about her at once. Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this morning, we're continuing this story that's a day in the life of Jesus Christ. The Gospel of Mark keeps everything short and sweet, with each action coming directly right after the one before. Last Sunday, we read about Jesus beginning his ministry. He goes to the synagogue on the Sabbath and demonstrates that he has authority over all things, clean and unclean. He has power over the worship space. He has power over the teachings of the word of God. And he has power over the unclean world, exercising demons and all things that hold us back from full lives of grace. This morning's reading continues in that very same day. Jesus and his followers leave the synagogue together. Now remember at this point, it's just four guys, Andrew, Simon, James, and John. So it's not a whole rabble rousing group. It's just four dudes with him. And after they worship, they go to Simon's house. And when they get there, they find that Simon's mother-in-law is in bed. She has a fever. This is yet another opportunity for Jesus to demonstrate his authority and to cross boundaries. He comes to the woman who would have been considered unclean, and he touches her to lift her from the bed. That action would have made Jesus unclean as well. But as we know, there's no unclean in the world of Christ. It's a miracle. And the woman rises to full health. And the text tells us that she then began to serve the group. Now, before my fellow feminists in the room cry foul at this woman rising from her sick bed only to turn around and wait upon this group of men, let me draw your attention to a bit of Greek. The word for serve, diakonos, is our word for deacon. This is a holy service. And so Simon's mother-in-law is the one who serves the servant Lord. So once again, we find that it's the women of the scriptures who understand Jesus the best and what he asks of us more so than the men. Okay, so the story continues on with the news that at sundown, people began to crowd around outside the door to ask for healing. Why mention sundown? because this is the Sabbath. And the healings Jesus has done so far this day, exercising the demon-possessed man in the synagogue and healing Simon's mother-in-law from fever, those are against the law. Those are against the laws of holiness because it's the Sabbath. So again, we're reminded that Jesus is the one who transgresses boundaries. But now that the sun is down, the Sabbath is over, and any healing that happens could be sanctioned by the church. The whole city is full of need. And so the people gather around the door of Simon's house. And Jesus offers hope to the hopeless 
and the people are so hungry for hope. Those who have been outsiders, outcasts, and strays gather around outside the home and clamor for a chance at Jesus' healing touch. Jesus doesn't cure them all, but many who were gathered there had their lives changed that night. When morning arrives, Jesus rises early. After the long night of healing and needs, Jesus needs some self-care. So he goes away privately, praying in a deserted place. But it doesn't take long before his friends wake up and wonder where he is. What is he doing? They want his attention. Simon finds Jesus outside and angrily chides him for leaving. That they hunted for him is an aggressive verb. And so they were like, dude, come on. What are you doing? The whole city is searching for Jesus. And riding the waves of fame and fortune, Simon is eager for Jesus to keep performing. But that isn't going to happen. After his reflective time in prayer, Jesus has gotten some clarity on his mission and ministry. He didn't just come to one town, Capernaum, and he didn't just come with one job, healing. Instead, Jesus is here to teach and preach, and the message of good news must be spread far and wide. Even though Simon might not understand it at this time, Jesus has a much broader mission than what Simon has seen so far. When I was reading the text this week, I was really drawn to this idea of boundaries. We talked a lot last week about Jesus being a boundary breaker, right? That Jesus has power over clean and unclean, over sacred and profane, over church life and the rest of the week. And Jesus helps other people break boundaries by restoring the demon-possessed man to full life in the community, by touching and healing Simon's mother-in-law. So we might be tempted to say that Jesus has no boundaries. But when we look closely at this story, we realize that isn't true. Look again at what happened that night. The sun went down and the needy people gathered around the door to the house. That door is a boundary. Jesus is inside and the need is outside. He can come and go through the space, but he does not invite all the needy people of the whole city of Capernaum into Simon's house. He does not invite all the needy people into the house. The text says, and Jesus cured many who were sick. It does not say Jesus cured all who were sick. Somewhere in there is a boundary. We don't have enough details to know who didn't get healed and why not, but we can see that somehow there Jesus was not able or not willing to heal everybody that was gathered that night. That's a boundary. And then Jesus goes away alone. That's another boundary. He goes to a deserted place with no people, and he prays alone with no church. Jesus needs time by himself if he is going to minister to others. And when Simon arrives in a huff and tells Jesus what to do, Jesus says, no. Again, a boundary. Jesus has his own idea of mission and ministry, and he's going to hold true to that message. So here we have a story of Jesus, the boundary breaker, keeping all sorts of boundaries. Those who follow Jesus cannot lock him into structure and rigidity, but Jesus himself will maintain boundaries in regards to his healing, his giving, his prayer life, his preaching, his personal space. We joke sometimes about preaching to this choir, preaching to the choir. This morning I'm preaching to the pastor, preaching to myself. I wrote this this week, you might know that. Hmm. As a solo pastor here at this church, I have a tendency to do too much. You might have noticed that behavior, especially if you see me during the week here. During our worship service, I accompany the choir and I provide special music and I lead the service. And today I'm trying to run Zoom like I'm sitting over there at that thing. Oh my gosh, that's too much. Not great boundaries. 
I'm sure you're not surprised to hear that when no one steps up to get the job done here, the job falls to me and I step up. I do that because somewhere deep inside me, I have internalized the message that that is the right thing to do. And I'm not sure that's a helpful or true message. When we look at Jesus in the reading today, we find that Jesus himself cannot be all things to all people. Who, again, hear me, Christ cannot be all things for all people. Jesus. So why would I think I can be all things to all people? You cannot imagine how much my heart aches, how personally it hurts my feelings when somebody leaves our church. When, for whatever reason, someone decides that it's time for them to go worship somewhere else, right? I am crushed. I am personally crushed. I have often felt like if I can't be the perfect pastor for all people, then I am a failure. Even Jesus isn't the perfect pastor for all people. I think that many of us out there, especially women, feel that our worth comes from service. We're like Simon's mother-in-law, dude. You heal us, we jump out of bed, we're getting it done now, right? We're going to get them hot plates running. We got people to feed, right? We're getting it done. And this morning's story of a day in the life of Jesus reminds us that that might not be the way to do it. Our worth needs to not be about getting it done. It needs to be interior, holy, of value, just because if I came out there today and just sat in the pew, I would be of value. I would be of worth just because I am a child of God and not because I am a pastor. And we all know what happens when we don't set boundaries, right? When we don't rest, when we don't have boundaries, when we don't take care of ourselves, then we get in trouble. We can't let all the needs of the world go through our front door and expect to survive. We can't jump every time somebody tells us to do something else and expect to thrive. We need to take a note here from Jesus, right? Doorways, alone time, prayer, saying no. We cannot pour from an empty cup. As individuals and as a church, we have finite resources. We only have so much energy, we only have so much money, we only have so much time. We need to pray and listen to God and seek the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, like Jesus does, right? Everybody's there wanting, 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 and he goes away and listens. And then he comes back and knows what he's able to give. We cannot let the crowds dictate who we are and what we do. We need to be plugged into something greater. We need to be plugged into Jesus and follow the example of Jesus Christ, the breaker of boundaries who maintains his own boundaries. May we do the same. Amen.
Please be seated. <clears throat> we come now to our time of prayer and sharing our joys and concerns together as a community. And I'm wondering what joys and concerns folks have that they would like to share today. What's on our hearts today? Marjorie. Prayers for Alec, who's living on the streets right now. Other joys or concerns? Mary. We're going to try to get Anna's surgery on Wednesday. Prayers for Anna for surgery this week. Others? Joys or concerns today, friends? Susan. <laughs> I don't know how many people this week I've said, that's the sermon. I said it to my massage therapist. I said it to Susan Seib. I said it to Olivia. I stood in the kitchen this morning and said, Mark chapter 1. <laughs> Others, joys or concerns? Yeah. Prayers for Jamie. Others. Okay. Friends, then let's turn our hearts to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, you never get tired. You keep watch over all of creation. We, on the other hand, get tired. And we need to rest. We are weak. So we pray, and we need your help. We pray for our church, that we could be the church for all people, especially for those who don't have a place in this world. In your church, may they find a home, a place where they find new strength and where they find rest. We pray for our world. There is sickness and exhaustion in our bodies and in our governments. The strong think that they can do anything and get away with it. We pray that you would shatter the pride of the strong and that you would reveal to the weak their own strength. We pray for the joys and concerns of our faith community. We pray for Alec living on the streets that he would feel your presence and, and find a way forward. We pray for Anna as she has surgery this week, that your healing hand would be upon her. We pray for Jamie, for wisdom and courage in this time of transition. And we pray for ourselves as we think about boundaries. Help us to turn to you in prayer so we know what are the right boundaries to set and which are the boundaries to cross in your name. We pray for those on our prayer list. Continued prayers of your healing presence for Teresa and baby Milo, for Margaret and Michael. We pray for people far away, for our friends in Malawi, for the people of Ukraine, for the people of Palestine and of Israel. We pray for those who've suffered abuse, who, who don't know boundaries. We pray for those who are looking for new work, trying to find new sets of boundaries. For those who are deployed in their families, first responders and their families, all our homeless brothers and sisters, Lord, the need is so great in your world. We pray with thanksgiving for this good planet that you've given us that we love, so beautiful. We pray with thanksgiving for this country that we live in and for this church that we love. And we pray today for the private prayers that rest deep in our hearts. We offer them to you now in this moment of silence. Gracious God, care for us.
tenderly. We're only mortals. We're gone by the time the sun rises tomorrow. Your breath could just blow us away. We pray that you would breathe on us as you breathed into the lungs of the first human. Let it be the breath of new life. We offer all our prayers this day in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who breaks boundaries, the one who sets boundaries, the one who taught us to pray, saying together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God has never given up on us, even when we've given up on ourselves, even when we've given up on our siblings and on the world. God breathes away the dross and breathes into us the stupendous power of love. Let us respond to God's steadfast love and grace with gifts of our own. I invite you to present before the Lord now your tithes, your gifts, and your very hearts as I present a gift of music. Gracious God, let your powerful grace flow through us and in us. Let that grace flow out as generosity, for our generosity can be inspiration to those on the verge of quitting, giving them power not to quit. May our gifts now and throughout this week be blessed by you. In Jesus' name, amen.
my friends, go into the world today and think about those boundaries. Pray about it. Where's the right spot to, to cross that boundary and let someone in? And where's that right spot to close the door and say, I need a minute. Go forth from this place in peace to love and to serve the Lord and be blessed, my friends, by the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Doing, but it's, I think it's going to be more impactful. If we no, I think I would meet him where he's at. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Have a good week. Thank you.